Hi everyone and welcome inside the studios at Lorain County Community College. My name is Ron Yance and we'd like to welcome you to our conversations with Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur. And on cue, joining me here in the studio is Congresswoman Kaptur and to her right is our Dean of our Engineering Division here at Lorain County Community College, Kelly Zalesnik. Today the conversation will center on manufacturing. Manufacturing in the state of Ohio, the history of it, the uh, current status of it, the future of it, but specifically in our region, your region, Congresswoman Kaptur, and our region that we like to say we serve at Lorain County Community College. So let's start with you. And, and when you think of manufacturing and you think of northeastern Ohio, what comes to mind? We are the spine of industrial manufacturing uh, in this state and truly um, a place unlike any other in our country. From one end of northern Ohio to the other are production platforms that, that other places simply can't replicate. Whether you're talking about the new uh, Ford EcoBoost engine over in Brook Park uh, in the adjoining county, or you're talking about the reborn uh, Ford Ohio assembly plant here uh, with the F650 uh, and 750, or you go west uh, through U.S. Steel, New Repu Republic Steel, uh, and on to the largest Chrysler Jeep platform on the continent over in Toledo. California has nothing like that. Because of the Great Lakes, because of the river system in northeastern Ohio, I think that's one of the reasons we became the spine of, of manufacturing, B the proximity to water and ships and bringing in steel for industry. Yes, and it was related to the development of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Seaway system where we could bring taconite, from the Duluth area, we could ship it by boat, which is the cheapest way uh, to ship heavy product, <clears throat> and then bring it to the mills. And so the Great Lakes were rather um, self-sufficient in terms of raw product. And uh, we had abundant coal. Some of that is changing mm -hmm. now in terms of what is being recommended for power generation, and then the water. Uh, and then all of our port cities uh, Lorraine itself, Vermilion, uh, Cleveland, Toledo, all places that you can ship from to somewhere else. The infrastructure that is here because of that would be cost prohibitive if anyone across the country wanted to, say, replace northeastern Ohio as a manufacturing spine, that wouldn't it? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, from a multimodal standpoint, if you look at rail, highway, sea, and even air for some of our airborne cargo, uh, really, we are a gateway to the entire heartland uh, here in the portal of northern Ohio. Let's bring in uh, Kelly Zalesnik for a second. Kelly, when in, Kelly's the dean of our engineering division here at Lorraine County Community College. When you think of manufacturing today in mm -hmm. 2014, mm -hmm. how is it different than it was uh, 50 years ago, 25 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago? You know, modern manufacturing is so different, and unfortunately, it gets a really bad rap. It's a very clean, high-tech environment. If you were to walk into a manufacturing facility today, the first thing that you would probably notice is that it's conspicuously quiet. You don't hear a lot of noise. It's bright, it's clean, um, and you would notice that there are not as many individual people as you would expect because so much of the processes have been automated. So you know, people think, oh, this isn't a, you know, I don't want my children to work in this. I, I worked in manufacturing for a number of years and it was one of the most um, exciting places to be. There was, it was always a rush to develop a new product and to start producing it and shipping it and knowing that it was something that was in demand. So I can't imagine a better, a better opportunity for our students and for the people of this region in Lorain County. Congresswoman, how do you fight what Kelly termed the bad rap of manufacturing, that the, the jobs have gone away and jobs aren't coming back in manufacturing? How do you, how do you fight that, um, that cloud that's out there and, and bring people back to reality? Well, it is true. America's lost about one-third of her manufacturing jobs, but as is evidenced with the rebirth of the automotive industry, for example, uh, you are seeing um, more cost-competitive manufacturing processes, uh, new products uh, that are coming out, more energy efficient. And so America is uh, re-securing our industrial base for the future. There's a whole lot of innovation going on in what is called advanced manufacturing. Here in northern Ohio, 
uh, companies are looking for qualified individuals, for example, who can work in the thin film <clears throat> industry where we adhere seven or eight layers, everything from steel to electronics. Somebody in the world, hopefully us, mm -hmm. is going to invent the flexible uh, panels that will be put on roofs to supply power, drawing from the sun, uh, but also using conventional technology. <clears throat> Someone's going to win that market. Hopefully it'll be us because of the kinds of companies uh, that we have here. Someone is going to invent the most energy efficient uh, automobile in the United States, and I happen to think it's going to be here in northern Ohio because we represent both. Uh, we have Ford's top um, eight-speed transmission um, and uh, also the, or I should say engine, and then we also have uh, General Motors' most efficient transmission, uh, the V8. So um, that's here plus the whole Chrysler G platform. So you have Ford, General Motors, Chrysler, all here in this region. Wouldn't that be the part of the country that really uh, has the raw material to rebuild toward the future? Uh, if it doesn't happen here, it doesn't happen. Kelly, the Congresswoman mentioned alternative energy in her comment just now. What is Lorain County Community College doing to prepare people for what the Congresswoman said to be ready for those jobs uh, in manufacturing through alternative energy when, when they're in demand? So one of the things that we're doing is we've always had those traditional degrees, electronics, for example. So if you're talking about flexible electronics, our students know the basics. But the other thing that we're doing is we're working with the National Association of Manufacturers. So we are embedding national standards, national certifications into our programs of study so that when employers you know, look out to who am I going to hire that knows how to do this, not only do our students have the degrees, in the educational program, but they have the industry-recognized skills to back it up in those certifications. For example, you know, we are embedding um, IPC standards in fabrication into our electronics degree so that employers know that when they hire someone, they know how to do that fabrication. We're also embedding um, digital fabrication, and we're working on those kinds of degrees right now so that students can use uh, use the whole concept of going from the 2D world directly to the 3D world, and they understand what those processes are, they understand how to iterate, they understand prototyping, they know what additive and subtractive processes are, and they have a, not only a base in the discipline, but in the process. Because what, what we do know is that whatever we train students for today, likely four years from now, that job's going to be very different as technology moves forward. So we want to train a base of students that not only understand the base discipline, but can think on their feet and learn on the move. Congresswoman, you were and are a big supporter of what's happening in Avon Lake with manufacturing, specifically the Ford plant, the power plant there that's certainly had its ups and downs and is in kind of a state of uncertainty to say the least. But let's talk about the Ford plant. Um, in March of this year, Ford announced they're bringing two truck lines to the Avon Lake plant. Um, just some statistics uh, quickly, here in Lorain County we have 20,000 jobs supported by manufacturing. Uh, Ten of the top 25 employers in the county are manufacturers, Ford being one of those. Uh, Ford being the, the largest employer uh, with over nearly 2,000 employees. What's that announcement bringing two truck lines to Avon Lake mean to, to our region? It means the future for our region <laughs> and an ability to add jobs as new technology comes online. That was such a great day. Thank you to the United Auto Workers for negotiating a contract that allowed for the return of those jobs. Working with the management of Ford Motor, uh, the North American uh, Chief Executive Officer for Ford Motor was here, uh, Joe Heinrichs, as a part of that great, great announcement. And uh, he said in his remarks that this was the beginning, and he held out the hope that if everything works out as they expect, that more jobs would be coming here. We have to work to that end. And I went up to him and to his vice president of manufacturing afterwards, and I said, what do we have to do to expand the number of jobs? And could I help you save money <clears throat> in the manufacturing process through energy savings? And he looked right at me. He goes, yes, let's start with the paint shop. I said, OK, you tell us how to do that. What do we have to do to help you expand jobs here? And um, we have to become more efficient uh, in manufacturing. We have to be uh, more energy 
uh, wise in what we do, and the products themselves have to be more energy efficient. New fuels, the opportunity to convert to natural gas, all this was talked about at that wonderful, wonderful announcement. And we have to commend the workers in that plant, give them the highest um, marks possible, because uh, even he said during the um, time when it was uncertain mm -hmm. that Ford would even remain open, the workers kept coming to work. They kept doing an excellent job. It was a dependable workforce and one that could work with the company. That became very evident during the ceremony. What's the timeline? For that. Well, they're going to invest $168 million, and the company and the union will work together on that. There will probably be some lines that have to be shut down as they convert. They're going to keep some of their older, um, more traditional products, but maybe convert them to natural gas use, for example. So there's some um, uh, refurbishing that has to go on inside that plant. Uh, but the wonderful uh, part is that uh, there will be other job opportunities open within the Ford hierarchy, according to what they said, and uh, people will be called back as the, uh, as the production comes online. We're going to take a short time out. Um, we're going to bring Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur back and continue our conversation with her and our dean of our engineering division, Kelly Zalesnik, and more on manufacturing when we come right back. There used to be a day, and, and really it isn't that far removed from our reality, when if you were a kid growing up and your father worked in a manufacturing plant, that's what you did, and that's what his father did, your grandfather. And oftentimes that happened just by graduating from high school and moving right into that job. Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, Dean of Engineering here at Lorain County Community College, Kelly Zalesnik, is that still the same reality? If you're a 16-year-old sitting out in the world today watching this show in Lorain County specifically mm -hmm. uh, and thinking about doing something in manufacturing? Uh, it, it is absolutely different. It is so much more high tech. And again, you know, it is, it's cleaner, it's, it's more professional. Um, you, would, you would be amazed at the opportunities that there are. We just opened a new program called Microelectromechanical Systems. These are technician jobs that pay wonderfully, and they're for people who work with companies that are embedding sensor technology into their products. So there are so many product lines that are out there. You, we don't even think about it, but you know, you think about your smartphone or you know any or your car and all the sensors that are in it. Well, the rest of the world is catching up, and they're embedding sensor technology on all types of products, and it's changing the functionality, the performance, the energy efficiency of those products. And so now we have an opportunity to help students tr train for jobs that are help helping companies grow as we speak in this region. And so just the embedding of sensor technology into these new companies um, is going to have a huge boost and it's going to give students an opportunity to work in a really exciting field. Your thoughts? My thoughts are that technology changes very quickly and that the job today is not quite the same as before. It requires much more creative thinking and embracing the future. As I said, this region has a natural manufacturing endowment. Well, uh, if paints are invented that have solar chips in them, and those can be sprayed on cars and help to contribute to heating and cooling, there's a whole field to be born in that arena. Composite materials used to lighten the weight of a vehicle, for example, uh, inventing materials that are even stronger mm -hmm. than ones that were used conventionally, preventing corrosion on metal in order to make the car last longer, the vehicle last longer, window technologies, multi-layer manufacturing involves more science. It involves people being open to creating the best product in the world and making suggestions to those with whom you work to retool the product, to reinvent the product, to meet the needs of a new day. So I would say it requires more education. It requires thinking mm -hmm. and trying to uh, advance knowledge uh, at every level. Flexible electronics, um, the use of new fuels. We live in a dynamic era now where science is being incorporated very quickly uh, into the way that we live every day. And that is 
that kind of competition is facing our automotive industry uh, today, our vehicular industry, our steel industry, um, to have very fine products, uh, the thinner or the thicker, uh, doing 3D manufacturing, uh, inventing something on a computer so that you don't have to make a model that then fails, mm -hmm. uh, being able to use, interact with uh, the digital age. That's so different than even 50 years ago, 40, 30 years ago, right? Ab absolutely. And that's the difference. When we talk about bringing jobs back, the manufacturing jobs back to the region, it's really about the fact that we can create a workforce. We can create graduates that can think innovatively, entrepreneurially within their own company, and that can rethink processes on the fly. And that's really what you want to have. Um, we use our digital fabrication lab to do just that. We teach students how to prototype and how to innovate and iterate, iterate and to deal with ambiguity all in that lab. And they learn how to learn from what they're doing and to cycle through and move quickly. And that's all about digital manufacturing, digital fabrication, and having that higher level of operation, exactly what, what you mentioned, Congresswoman Kaptur. Right, and if I could just reference, in the field of agriculture, for example, uh, we don't think of that as manufacturing, mm -hmm. right, because the earth grows things naturally. But when you think about Lorain County and adjoining counties, agriculture remains a major business yes. in this region. Imagine if we could invent for companies like Willoway and, uh, and Green Circle Growers and so many other companies. Imagine if you, and Chef's Garden over in Erie County, the most efficient uh, undercover production structure where mm -hmm. the least water and the least energy is used for the maximum production. We would revolutionize agriculture in this country over four seasons. Uh, we're still using 20th century technology. I'll probably offend some people by saying that, but really if you look at the <clears throat> uh, cover that we use on many of our houses now, uh, that's old stuff. Uh, and imagine a technology that used science much more heavily and engineering to create a um, a uh, production platform where you reduce the cost of inputs per square foot and you use that space maximally to advance production. We want to steal production away from California. Sure. I mean, they took ours about, oh, 50 years ago, so let's get it back in tomatoes and vegetables, you know, um, and uh, even fish production. We are just at the dawn of a new age in agriculture, and Lorain County can also play a role uh, in manufacturing the systems of production that could return wealth here. Let's talk about, and we've got maybe about four minutes left, um, as an offshoot from the Northern Ohio Energy and Innovation Summit, which was held in December, um, there's a special meeting, I think, coming up with regional stakeholders to, uh, to talk about manufacturing with the Department of Energy. Yes, we are working very hard uh, with um, the uh, Obama administration and the Depart U.S. Department of Energy and the U.S. Department of Defense to identify in the industrial sector in manufacturing uh, what special capabilities we have as a region that we can partner with our private companies and the Department of Energy and the Department of Defense to invent the future. Picking an area, maybe it's thin film technologies, maybe it's flexible electronics or the two of those together, <clears throat> maybe it's strategic metals and new alloys building off of our steel and our strategic metals industries like beryllium, magnesium, titanium. One can pick whatever sector one wants, but the question is where can we excel? Uh, the United States government has selected four sites already, one in Youngstown, Ohio, that is involved in additive manufacturing. They have selected one in North Carolina to make a more energy efficient chip. Mm -hmm. uh, we use chips in everything, but to make them more energy efficient. Uh, modern Metals Manufacturing Center, that will be a cooperative effort between the University of Michigan and uh, stakeholders in uh, Detroit, private sector stakeholders, along with Ohio State University. But this area of Ohio, from uh, Cleveland, Lorraine, uh, Sandusky, Toledo, we're not heavily involved in one of those uh, partnership efforts yet. And we're, we're pushing the edge of that to say, could we? Could we be one of those places for advanced manufacturing in a sector that America so needs to develop? And why does that make sense? Because that's where new jobs come from. Mm -hmm. 
uh, if you thought 15 years ago, would there be such a thing as an iPhone or would there be something uh, as a smartphone or an iPad? Well, that came from somewhere. And it comes from basic research that usually not one company can support. It takes a consortium along with the federal government saying, this is an arena in which we need to move. Um, I saw something that is so astounding and that's still on the drawing boards um, in the production of power, which is so important to our region because of the users of power. You send power over a transmission line from a point of generation to point of use. We can lose upwards of 75% of that power. It's a very inefficient system. I saw a system that's 100% efficient. It's a thin ceramic uh, fiber inside a nitrogen bath, defended, developed partly by the U.S. Department of Navy, 100% efficient. Wow. The money you could save if you could make that technology deployable. So it results in jobs, it results in cost savings, it makes us more competitive. Kelly, the things that she's talking about, the things that could happen, yes. specifically in our region, that would make life easier, more efficient, cost savings, mm -hmm. create jobs. When you look at the list of folks who are involved in these uh, Department of Energy summits uh, with the Northern Ohio Energy and Innovation, you look at Lorain County Community College, Case Western Reserve, University of Toledo, uh, there are, there are college-based connections with this summit, along with others. But so the ideas, the, the, the concepts, they're really going to come from a classroom somewhere, are they not? I think they are, and they, they work both ways. Not only will they come from basic research, but that basic research is going to inform the educational programs and how we educate our students who are going to be that, become that workforce. So it's going to work in both directions, and that's the beautiful part of it, is that having those collaborations and that those connections means we can have our, we can train students to be ready, you know, when we are ready to hit the ground running. Kelly Zalesnik, the uh, Dean of Engineering here at Lorain County Community College, and Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, who joins us on a regular basis inside our studios here at Lorain County Community College for conversations with the Congresswoman. Next time you come back, we're going to, and maybe we could just tease it real quickly here in, in like maybe 30 seconds, we're going to talk about Lake Erie and what that means. What will that center around? We're going to talk about the importance of Lake Erie to the world and to our economy here and to our environment. No place on earth like it. And we'll bring in some of our students at Lorain County Community College. Dr. Kathy Durham, one of our professors in our biology department, has a student-led research group that is dealing with Lake Erie and some of the things that the Congresswoman will talk about too, so look forward to that. Congresswoman Kaptur, Kelly Zalesnik, thanks for joining us. Thank you Thank very you. much. You guys have a great day. Everybody have a great day and join us next time on Conversations with Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur.